Understanding the different types of carbohydrates in foods is the beginning of understanding carbohydrates. But we also need to understand what happens after we consume them. So what happens to carbohydrates in the body? To do that, I w first want you to think about your symptoms if you haven't eaten for several hours. You'll likely have hunger in your stomach. It feels empty and maybe growls. You may also have hunger in your head, developing a headache, becoming irritable and j jittery. That's because your brain and your nerve cells like glucose for energy, and if you haven't eaten for several hours, your blood glucose is dropping. Let's continue on with the scenario, though, and pretend despite being hungry, you can't eat. Maybe you're in a traffic jam or in an important meeting. What happens next? For most people, in a while, maybe about 30 minutes, the hunger goes away. Now, it will return, but for a time it subsides. What is happening is the blood sugar is rising. The body is going to strive to maintain a tight range of blood glucose. And when it goes high, called hyperglycemia, it will work to lower it. And when your blood sugar goes low, called hypoglycemia, the body will work to raise it. Let's see how the body manages to do this. A lot on this graphic. I want to first have you note these different terms. I've got the terms for body uh, glucose regulation. We've talked about hyperglycemia, hypoglycemia. The term homeostasis just means internal, internal stability, and blood glucose regulation is a classic example of that. So if we could think about these steps, first thing I want us to think about is after we eat. So we've got a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, glass of milk, and apple. We've got all different types of car carbohydrates there. We've got starch, we've got disaccharides, we've got monosaccharides. If we remember those steps of digestion, we know that all of them are going to be converted to monosaccharides, single sugar units, and that's what's going to be absorbed. Now we have different types of monosaccharides. We've got galactose, fructose, glucose. Once we get these different types of monosaccharides in the body, they all are going to be converted to glucose. So when we talk about blood sugar, we're only going to be talking about blood glucose. So after we eat, we've got glucose. We've always got a little bit in our body, but after we eat, we're going to have a rise in blood glucose. So we're going to add a lot of G's here in this pretend blood glucose, <clears throat> our blood uh, screen here, and we're going to have this rise in blood glucose. In response to that, what will happen is the, the pancreas of the body, where we produce insulin, will release that insulin into the blood. So we'll add some eyes to our bloodstream here. So we've got a rise in blood glucose that leads to the pancreas releasing insulin. Now in response to that insulin, what will happen is the glucose is going to be pulled out of the blood into to the tissues. So the tissues recognize that insulin and in response to that we're going to pull blood and glucose out of the blood into the tissues. Now what happens to that glucose? Well, all kinds of things can happen to that glucose, and it really depends upon what's happening. Are you sitting in a traffic jam, or are you out for afternoon run? Well, here are a few. One, we can use it for energy. Every cell in the, in the body can use glucose for energy, and it has that four calories per gram. Another thing that we can do is that we convert it to its storage form of carbohydrates. So the storage form of carbohydrate is, get this color here, is glycogen. And the liver and the muscle tissues can do this. Another thing that we can do, we can take that glucose and we can convert it to fat. Which shouldn't be too surprising, we know this. If we eat a lot of, of potatoes and bagels and pasta and candy and soda pop, a lot of sources of glucose, we will gain body fat. So somehow the body's able to take that glucose and convert it to body fat. But the bottom line, all of this is being pulled, all this glucose is being pulled out of the blood into the tissue, our blood glucose drops. Let's go back to our scenario though, that we've got this drop in blood glucose, we're hungry, we can feel that, but we aren't able to eat. So we are now going to have low blood sugar. What's going to happen next? So in response to a low blood sugar, our pancreas, we're still with that pancreas organ, is going to release the hormone glucagon. So insulin was the hormone of feasting, but glucagon is the hormone of fasting. I always like to have students pay attention to glycogen and glucagon are very similar words, but very, very distinct. Glycogen is that storage form of carbohydrate, and glucagon is this hormone produced by the pancreas and released into the blood. 
So let's add some abbreviation. We're using the abbreviation in here. We're going to add that to our blood. Now in response to this glucagon rising in our blood, we are going to send the message to the liver to break down glycogen to glucose and release it back into the blood. So now we got glucose rising again um, because we're breaking down that liver glycogen and releasing it back into the blood. blood. Now, I've said over here that both liver and muscle can convert glucose to glycogen and store it, but in response to low blood sugar, only the liver is able to release that uh, glycogen, break it back down to glucose, and release it back into the blood. That muscle is kind of stingy, and once you uh, put glucose into the muscle and store it as glycogen there, it can only use it within that muscle. It cannot release that any of that glucose back into the blood. But here we are in our scenario. We have our gly uh, glucagon that's told the liver to break down the glycogen and to release that glucose back into the blood, and we've got a rise in that blood glucose. If we put that in a graphic representation, here's how we could think about that. If we have the beginning, we, we'll say we'll come in fasting. A normal uh, blood glucose value of someone with fasting would be below 100 milligrams per deciliter. So let's say you start this and you're fasting and you have a blood glucose of say 95 and you eat. You have that peanut butter uh, sandwich and apple and glass of milk. Your blood glucose will rise it's going to come back down. Okay, so here we we eat. Our insulin's going to be released. And now the tissue is taking up glucose. If we go on long enough, our blood glucose is going to drop and maybe too low. We're going to feel hungry here. We might get this headache. And if we can't eat, or even if we do eat, but if uh, we could make that glucose rise again, but let's say that we didn't eat, what will happen down here, we'll have that release of glucagon, and that will tell the liver glycogen to break down and release that blood glucose back into the blood. So now we can see that the body is regulating glucose, glucose to keep it in a tight, normal range, and we have insulin is the hormone of feasting, and glucagon is the hormone of fasting, and we're going to have normal blood glucoses um, and with both high levels and low levels to maintain homeostasis.